Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to explore one of the core foundations of advanced product quality planning. The five phases of APQP. Let's imagine we're launching a new component. Let's try to follow its APQP journey step by step. Let's start with phase one, plan and define. This is where everything begins, the foundation of your project. In phase one, our main focus is on understanding requirements and setting the stage for success. We gather all critical information, customer requirements like mechanical loads and environmental conditions, feasibility and cost targets. Can we actually produce this part within expectations? Supplier capability and early risk assessments. High level project planning, including the timeline, a budget and key milestones or gate criteria. Think of phase one as building the roadmap before the journey starts. If this phase is weak, everything that follows becomes reactive rather than proactive. Then comes phase two, product design and development. This is where ideas start turning into tangible designs. Activities here include developing the product design, mechanical layout, electrical schematics, and 3D models. Performing DFM EA, design failure mode and effects analysis to identify potential design weaknesses. Planning and conducting design verification testing, such as vibration, thermal cycling, or environmental durability. Defining interfaces and tolerances and calling out special characteristics on drawings. At this point, design and quality teams work closely to ensure risks are designed out early, not discovered later in production. Now that the product design is stable, we must figure out how to manufacture it consistently. That's the goal of phase three, process design and development. In this phase, we create the process flow diagram, defining each step of production, conducting a PFMEA to identify potential process related risks, developing a control plan that links each process step to its inspections, measurements, and reaction plans, performing MSA, measurement system analysis, to ensure gauges and test equipment are accurate and repeatable. Implementing SPC, statistical process control, for critical parameters like torque, dimensions, or leakage. Aligning with suppliers, ensuring their processes are synchronized with your own APQP plan. In short, phase three builds the bridge between design intent and real world manufacturing capability. Now we are ready to move on to phase four, which is product and process validation. Phase four is where we prove that both the product and the process work as intended before full scale production. Here we start conducting prototype and pilot builds to validate tooling, process flow and operator training. Performing run at rate studies to confirm production capacity. Executing capability studies for critical features. Compiling and submitting the production part approval process package to the customer. When this phase is successfully completed, the customer grants production approval and your organization is ready the next phase, phase five, which is launch, feedback and continuous improvement. The work doesn't stop at launch. This phase ensures we learn and improve from real world performance. In this phase, monitoring field performance, warranty returns and in-plant quality data take place. Performing 8D analyses for any issues found after launch. Feeding lessons learned back into design standards and process templates. Updating training materials and improving the next APQP cycle. Phase 5 closes the loop. It's where experience transforms into organisational knowledge. Now it is important to understand that throughout all phases, supplier alignment, measurement readiness and change control must be tightly managed. This is what ensures a smooth, predictable launch. Now that we learned what the five APQP phases are, let's make it real with two contrasting product examples, an ECU housing, an electromechanical product, and a machined steel bracket, a simple mechanical product. Let's start with the ECU housing. In phase one, plan and define, the customer sets requirements, IP rating, vibration and thermal limits, connector type, and of course, 
cost targets. Our team reviews feasibility and risks to confirm we can meet expectations before moving forward. Next, phase two starts, product design and development. Here, engineering and quality teams work together on the design. Through the DFMEA, we identify risks like connector pin misalignment, gasket leakage, or EMI issues. We plan verification tests, vibration, humidity, thermal cycling, to validate the design early. Now we plan how to build it. This is now phase three, process design and development. We define each step, machining, coating, assembly, electrical testing, and analyze risks through PFMEA. We create a control plan, verify our gauges and testers with MSA, and use SPC to monitor critical parameters like torque or leakage. Suppliers align their own APQP activities with ours to stay in sync. Then in phase four, validation and launch readiness, we run prototypes and pilot builds, test capacity with run at rate, and perform capability studies. Then we compile the PPAP package, FMEA, control plan, MSA, dimensional data, and submit for customer approval. Once approved, we're ready to launch. And finally, phase five, launch and continuous improvement. After production begins, we track field data and warranty returns. Any issues trigger 8D investigations and lessons learned are fed back into future designs. That's how APQP turns experience into continuous improvement. Now let's contrast that with a simpler part, a machined steel bracket. No electronics here, but the APQP flow is exactly the same. Again, we start with phase one, plan and define. The customer specifies loads, fatigue life, corrosion resistance, and cost. We review feasibility, material supply, machining capability, and cost targets. Then come phase two, product design and development. The DFMEA highlights potential failures like fatigue cracks or weld issues. We plan validation tests for fatigue, corrosion, and dimensional stability. After that, phase three starts, process design and development. We define steps like machining, heat treatment, and inspection. PFMEA identifies risks such as tool wear, or dimensional variation. Control plan, MSA and SPC ensure stable, capable production. And at phase four, validation and approval, pilot builds and capability studies confirm process control. The PPA is approved and we're cleared for production. And finally, phase five, feedback and improvement. We monitor field performance and feed lessons back into design and process documents. That closes the loop continuous improvement in action. And that's our overview of the five phases of APQP, the structured roadmap that connects concept to customer. In the next lecture, we will break down the five APQP phases in fine detail, deliverables, gate criteria, techniques, and map them onto our example products. You'll see exactly how we move from plan to validation and launch. Thanks for your attention. And I'll see you in our next lecture. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts or questions. And if you're into leveling up your skills with expert-led content, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. For full courses, downloadable assignments, and certifications, head over to excitify.com. Start learning smarter today.